There's the old lady we're going to talk about tonight. Let me see her. Oh. Eleanor, when she died. And I uh, will tell you about my first encounter with Eleanor. Eleanor who? <laughs> Countess of Desmond. Eleanor, the Countess of Desmond, the subject of our class tonight. Um, now that's her as a young lady. So, you know, from that to that. So her, she was 18, 15, 16, I went with her years. 1845. We don't know exactly when she died. Um, there, are, um, there are claims that she lived as long as um, 1650, but I kind of doubt that. Um, but, she was born in 1589? Uh, no, I th 1545 is where I have somewhere, but uh, boy, I, I, you know, don't, don't go to, don't go to, um, to the bank How with that one. How have such a good portrait of her? It's from a painting. It would have been a painting, I suppose. They had some very good painters in those days. Um, the reason I say that I, my encounter with her was on the, the walls of the old abbey in Sligo, near where I come from. And that's where she died, and she, that's where she spent the remainder of her life. Was what did she the, say to you, Patty? What did she say to me? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, she says, you're a fine strapping young fellow. She says, in my day, you'd have been an earl at least. You, you deal what? An earl, earl. Oh, an earl. She was married to an earl, she was a countess. You gotta, be a, you gotta marry an earl to be a countess. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the great expanse of Irish history that she uh, covered and represents that's of great interest um, uh, to us all and tonight. And Anne Chambers, who wrote this book, um, is from my county, she's from Mayo, and she wrote about Grainne Whale, and then she wrote about uh, Eleanor. Which is sort of nice, the fact that we have female women um, historians nowadays who uh, research and write about um, unsung heroes like um, the Countess of Desmond. Now, I have read many books on the Earl of Desmond, Gareth Fitzgerald, um, and so has most people who study Irish history. I would say he's probably right up there with Hugh O'Neill as far as uh, people being interested in him and knowing about him. And of course, uh, in, in some respects, he's actually more significant than Hugh O'Neill. In fact, he really was more significant because he really um, started the whole rebellious Irish rebellion during the the Tudor times. Um, <laughs> I hope he's not writing down that he was more important than, than the great O'Neill. I don't think he's going to write that. He's writing my name down, I think. He's putting my name in his book. I think he's calculated my penance. I think it's going to be more than three Hail Marys this time. Uh, but anyway, she, um, uh, she, she was, um, she was, uh, she was born in Kiltinan, that castle right there, uh, in County Tipperary, in Fetterd, well, uh, near Fetterd. Well, flash the page again. Andrew. Pardon? You have to flash the page again. Okay. Um, well, it's just a castle, you know, but, um, it's well known in Ireland um, it's a, a national um, monument or national whatever treasure um, Is the Earl of Desmond an Irishman or an Englishman? <laughs> well definitely an Irishman um, the Desmonds and the Ormonds the, 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 the great medieval families were the Fitzgeralds there was actually three branches of the family uh, the Fitzgeralds of Kildare, the, the, uh, the, the Fitzgeralds of Ormond, which was uh, the, um, more in the, the Midlands, Offaly, and the Fitzgeralds of Desmond, which were in the south, southwest. 
Um, so you'll often hear Ormond, Desmond, and um, the, Earl, the Geraldines, the Earl of Fitzgerald. There was great rivalry between the Ormonds and the Desmonds. Um, and the Ormonds, it was complicated. I wouldn't want to try and unravel it all right now, but the Ormonds uh, were um, uh, a substantial portion of them were uh, the, the, uh, the butlers of Kilkenny. I always think of them as the Ormonds as the butlers of Kilkenny, but they were much more than that. They spread uh, quite a bit further west. But the, the Desmonds were probably the richest. Well, they were all rich. Kilkenny was very rich. Kildare was rich. But the Desmonds were incredibly rich because they owned all that great land in, uh, in, in Cork and Kerry and uh, Tipperary, the Golden Vale. I mean, just some of the richest, richest land in all of the... Uh, islands of Britain and Ireland, and the, the those three families, those three lords or lordships, were actually greater than any single lordship in England. And the Desmonds were richer than even the Duke of North, York or Lancashire. They were incredibly rich, and they were very powerful at the the at the British, at the English court. And uh, at this period, the, the man that represented the Ormond family was a great favourite of the Queen, known as Black Tom. And a lot of them, <laughs> because he was black hair, I guess, a swarthy, look, tall, good-looking, he was the classic sort of courtier um, <clears throat> of his age. And uh, Elizabeth was very, very fond of him. And a very strong belief that he was allowed the privileges of her bedchamber. Um, and she, had, she, she was devoted to him for her entire life. And she favoured him uh, over the Earl of Desmond, namely Gard Fitzgerald. And uh, in many ways, a lot of Garrett's problem and Desmond's problem was that he wasn't Big Tom. Oh, no, Big Tom. He wasn't Black Tom, the famous Irish singer called uh, Big Tom. Anybody watching in Ireland would laugh at that, would get a laugh at the Big Tom. No, he wasn't Big Tom. Uh, Black Tom. Um, but the Ormonds um, typically did much better vis-a-vis -vis the English th throne or crown all down through the ages. The... Kildare Fitzgeralds had a lot of problems. They were executed in the in the tower in the Tyburn. There was, they had they they were never they were very powerful, but the Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth and her father Henry um, gave them a rough time. So they had a very hard time, and so it Desmond. But the Ormonds seem to always do very well. Now, um, there's, a, there's a famous story told of, of uh, probably the last great battle between barons, between uh, feudal lords in, and I hate using the expression, the British Isles, but at that time I suppose that was what it was known as, the British Isles. Um, the last great battle took place between... Uh, Gareth Fitzgerald, the Earl of Desmond, and Black Tom, the Earl of Ormond, where they actually went at each other. Now, that was absolutely against the, the, the rules of the day um, as far as Queen Elizabeth was concerned and the Tudors and the, the, the Elizabethan court was concerned because... What the Tudors had done was they had uh, moved England <clears throat> away from the old medieval knights and lords fighting among themselves as, with private armies, and they had created a state, a singular state. And the idea that these two Irish and 
very powerful lords were actually having a private battle. Um, not the biggest battle in the whole world, but nevertheless, where perhaps a thousand people or more did die. So there would be four or five thousand um, soldiers on one side against a similar on the other. And Gareth Fitzgerald, the Desmond, was badly wounded, but he was carried away from the field and uh, by the victorious Ormonds and the butlers, and um, they were teasing him because he was being carried on a litter, and they were saying to him, so now where is the great Fitzgerald? Because he was known, known for his pride and haughtiness uh, and his aristocratic manner.